Um, and honestly, it's not always up to him. I feel like you need to pick some sort of heroes that are able to push the waves out super quickly so that the vengeful spirit has some time and some space to be able to farm. You know, this is a, a greedy position three, at Radiant least until you get that Agonim back. Scepter. So I feel like with this Earth Spirit in particular, his main target is going to be rotating towards that Vengeful Spirit lane and uh, making sure you're getting multiple kills and slowing down that timing. Are you a fan of the Vengeful... Uh, so the Monkey King getting picked up here at the 18th for Galaxy Racer? How, how do you feel about this? I mean, I feel like the Monkey King's just a strong hero overall, right? But uh, in terms of the one-on-one -on -one matchup, I mean, when there are a lot of uh, illusions, you're going to be able to land a pretty decent boundless strike and, uh, you know, be able to lifesteal a ton, reveal the real PL. There is the threat of getting kited around a little bit, though, right? Like, it does depend on who actually looks to start the fight, because if Yangon are the ones that are initiating, which, you know, they certainly do have the capabilities to do so, Earth Spirit and Enemy Spirit, and then the Global Silence on top of things, uh, Monkey remain. King, he doesn't build into a Manta style, so you need to wait for that BKB timing on him. And uh, that's going to be probably third item, even though we've got some second item BKBs coming out for the Monkey King in recent times. He can definitely itemize for an early satanic if need be. That this is the nice True. thing. It's still definitely one of the I you could definitely argue the best carry item right now with the immense value you, you can get out of it with the with the basic dispel. It's just ridiculous, especially with how much silence are we being seeing. I feel like the Monkey King, like before I as soon as I saw it, my initial thought, I, I wasn't too much of a fan of it because I didn't see how they were really going to be able to deal with the Phantom Lancer. But I think what the Monkey King gives you is just a crowd control where you just, you have this area of the fight that your team owns, which makes it very difficult for Phantom Lancer to pick off the supports and for Embo to be able to jump the supports on the back line as well. So if they can lay down the Wukongs now, they're lacking ways to keep them in. Unless Tiny has a blink, maybe the burst and his high Toss levels back. can help that. Yep. Pango, Rolling Thunder's got to be pretty on point. It's not easy. It's definitely not the most guaranteed way to enable a Wukongs. Yeah, Swap's one of the better ones. But I want to see their last pick on maybe some uh, easy stuns to help catch the Ember, but also maybe enable the Wukongs a little bit more. Again, though, I feel like this game almost entirely is going to come down to who starts the team fights, right? Like, like you said, if they can get the Monkey King's uh, Wukong's command down in a pretty decent spot, have the supports be protected by it, then you know you're you're sitting pretty. But if not, if you need, if you're actually going Five in onto the Monkey King remaining. using that global silence and looking to punish him before that uh, BKB or Satanic timings, then I feel like the team fight crumbles pretty quickly for Galaxy Racer. And Quite often, you're looking for a self-sufficient offlaner when you're paired with the Earth Spirit, some beefy hero that can kind of eat through a lot of spells and have region for the lane. Monkey King's great against that. Just conceptually, how he's able to play the lane, just being able to stack up the Jingu, and then you can just out-trade and out-harass. So this last pick from Yang Gong is very difficult. Like, they've got to go into a Pugna now. You band up the Viper, the Veno, some of the better matchups head-to-head -head versus the Monkey in the lane. And now you've got a hero that can very much be penalized from rotations early. We saw what happened, I think, a couple days ago with the, the Pugna offlane. The Pugna throw is a little bit of a, a spanner into the works, but I, I kind of was Five thinking of Dragon remaining. Knight here for uh, Galaxy Racer for their mid lane. Like you, You're going to have a decent time against the Ember Spirit. It, it is hard to get rid of the Flame Guard, but then later on, it feels like PL is going to have a lot of difficulty to be able to take you down. You know, you might be out of mana, but as long as you're in that Elder Dragon form, you don't really care. And that's the big thing for mine, right? Like, it needs to be something that's not mana dependent, but somehow is still able to dish out some sort of uh, some sort of spells, right? Because you need to be able to get through that Decrepify somehow, and they're very physical damage oriented right now on uh, Galaxy Races, so... Honestly, I'm struggling to think of uh, what they have that's going to be able to tick all of these boxes. Um, Storm could be an option if they put the Tiny on a 4. Uh, it's honestly not the worst against PL because you do have a lot of AoE damage in the earlier stages. They're just going to go support anyway, so it looks like it's mid -tiny. a mid-tiny, which gives you... So they... I guess now with having a tiny as a core, the little bit of lack of magic damage will be picked up slightly, but I feel like he has to have a pretty good game. How, and how do you feel like he's going to fare then versus the, the Ember mid? 
I feel like he can have an alright time against the Ember Spirit mid. I think it was... That was definitely something done out of necessity, as opposed to something they might have wanted to do, right? Because all of the heroes that would have been viable for this uh, were just removed from the pool. So I feel like you need something that, you know, even if you pop the Global Silence, as long as Tiny's holding his tree and gets the initial combo off, you're going to be pretty happy. You know, you, you don't have a lot of that sustained damage, and by the time the Global's worn off, you can just do your combo again after a few seconds. So... I, I do like the fact that they've switched the Tiny up to the mid lane. I feel like you're going to have a decent time against the Ember Spirit. And I feel like even against the Pugna, the Clockwork's pretty effective, right? It's one of those heroes yep. that you, I mean, even the Silencer in the same sort of vein, you just get on top of him and, uh, you know, they're, they're not quite so able to do as much. Yeah, this gives Galaxy Racer now also a support to help keep them inside the Wukongs. Like I was kind of... Whatever their last pick was, I wanted at least maybe a better way to deal with Ember, which I still think they don't have, but at least some way to enable the Wukongs. And I think uh, I think Clockwork can do that at an exceptional rate. And I, I like the point you highlighted with the supports as well. The Clockwork is just going to be able to catch out the Silencer or also the bigger issue with the potentially Pugna. And that's the not Pugna. even a support, yeah. right? Like that's, that's, that's a core that you're taking out potentially with the... Uh, a position five hero on your side. So if Polison's able to get in position really nicely, then, you know, it's a nice little bonus for him. Uh, how are we feeling about this game? Because like we, you were saying, coming in, Galaxy Race is surprisingly on the bottom of the table, but they've only played two series. And that was what they had a 0-2 against Boom, and then they won one Dream Maker. So see how they're able to fare versus the second open qualifier team are you liking their draft here for game one or do you feel like it's uh, not too much of a draft win for either team uh i think until that clockwork i was actually leaning more towards yangon but i feel like it does tick a lot of boxes and uh being able to flex that mid lane has gotten galaxy racer out of a bit of a bind here so it seemed pretty even for mine and uh, overall you would have to galaxy racer so they're still the more experienced team and uh, with that being said, I'm probably going to favor them slightly just because of that. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see how Tiny will fare as well, because this was a hero who we're really not seeing a whole lot at all through the meta. And we saw yesterday Yopaj pick it up and have an exceptional performance uh, against Execration. So we'll see if Alacrity can have the, the similar fate here and uh, how many kills he can pick up at an early stage, because I do think they're very much going to need the early burst potential. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Alacrity is able to do. What, uh, what sets he got on the Tiny? Ancient Inheritance. So if you didn't know, with the Tiny, obviously he's got the four different forms. So you can actually like uh, change the styles with each of the forms. That's how I've got my Tiny set up. So like it's the original one to start with, and then there's like the snow one, and then there's this one, and then there's like a, a fiery molten lava one as the super big Tiny. Damn, so your Tiny kind of balling out. Mm -hmm. He's Should... literally evolving each time he, uh, he All right. pulls up. Do you play much of the tiny though? Like, are you trying nope. to? Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. So you can have the cool sets, but you know how much you sure. you actually really utilizing them is the big question. That's the big question that I ask myself whenever these like <laughs> you know collectors' caches come out. It's like, how much am I really going to play this hero? Yeah. Well. I am also intrigued to see how Zorain can play on the Pugna in the lane. You at least have range... Oh. He got tossed back underneath the tower. Well, I guess this was something we didn't bring into our calculations yesterday with the Tiny was it against the Conquer. And still the Tiny always offers you some outplay potential and Alacrity showing it. Nearly able to get the uh, the escape off there with the use of the slide of fist to dodge the uh, the tree hitting you, but just uh, not judging it quite so well. Although that outplay alacrity, one of the best mids in the C region on his uh, set core of heroes, and well, he's making it work really well for him so far in this lane. Yeah, that is uh, a big lead. He's now going to have over Young PH as we see how the the bottom lane's going for Yang Gong. Seen how have a very very strong performance here from the Phantom Lancer. Avenge, Pango lane. Do you feel like this is a lane that can maybe get kills, or is this just Mizu trying to pick up as many last hits as possible? 
I think it's just more around the last. It's like he, it could change when you've got that Orb of Venom eventually coming out to Joker, just because you're going to obviously have the slow from the shield crash plus the other uh, Orb of Venom slow, some minus armor from Mizu. So I think Lund needs to still continue to be a little bit careful. How obviously not anywhere near as much. See how much the Silencer can do, which is two rounds of the spells here versus Mizu, but. He's got some one charges, even bring out a, an extra set of tangos. So recognizing that there's going to be a lot of poke and prod. Killed. Needs to prioritize the resources just to keep himself afloat in the lane. Then how are we looking on the top side? Uh, they've been able to block up this small camp a fair few times. So continue to allow Zorain to have a, a free time, not having to worry about moving around. Oh, actually looking to make the roll over again is skill A. So even though they got the D ward off, it's uh, actually that was an observer ward that they placed down, not even a, a sentry. So giving Paulson over a little bit of free golden experience, I'm not sure if that's what you want to do. But still, the last place a Pugna wants to be is anywhere further than this line. Otherwise, you run a, a pretty high risk of getting ganked. You'll be able to get away from this one, though. They're going to turn Apollo? Yeah, they will try and start that, but... See, it's still a question if if you can man fight the, the lane at the moment. I mean, the, the Pugna... I definitely like his item build. You see the, the boots, wind lace, early commitment into the movement speed, especially against the clockwork and the, the monkey king. You really need priority on your movement speed. Skill A, unfortunately, was just a little bit short on uh, mana. Even the stick charges wouldn't have been enough to enable the, the kick for Polison back underneath the tower. That would have been huge for Pugna to be able to get that early bonus gold. Feels like we... Are gonna have a game that can be pretty off the back as well of the position That's twos making plays across the map. I mean, at the Dyer's moment we still see Ember suffering a little bit in his mid matchup. Alacrity, uh, a first blood to really help secure the lane. It looks like, and and now unfortunately for the Ember, he's having to play around with a lot of the commitment for the bounty runes and water runes, and just hoping he can kind of get to a stage where he can shove out the lane and, and go back and farm the jungle. Been able to bring up uh, Zorain here. They're actually going to make it a bit of an attempt onto In Your Dream, missing the mischief there. So ends up taking the damage from that level two uh, Nether Blast. Oh, how might be in so... trouble down bot? He found the real Phantom Lancer. He got a lot of health back from the stick. They didn't want damage to bring him down. Now it's actually Mizu that might end up falling. Alone with two points in the Arcane Curse. The damage, however, not enough once it's amplified from the silence, but. And just the little engagement and skirmish down in the bottom lane. And we continue with the action top as they're on Zorain. Gonna get under the tower with the it's decrypt. decrypt. Pugna's protected now. They'll turn back on Polison. The tower kit getting them some assistance, but won't have the damage to clean off the clockwork. So it just feels like there's a trend at the moment. All the side lanes are needing more levels to help with the lack of damage. It's got to be very careful here. This is still a Monkey King with a Jingu Mastery. Two points into it. So a single Boundless Strike will very easily kill him. Now skill A2. He's only got one point in the primal spring. But rolls on cooldown. So is kick, so we can't push back in your dream, but he's gonna give him up. Yes. Oh, it's a movement speed. He was I believe 15 movement faster, but felt like it would have taken him a bit too long. Yeah, I mean you're happy with that for Galaxy Racer Pulse and of course going down, but to give the free experience and kill gold over to in your dream, you're very happy with that. It, Feels like this Pugna needs to be dominating the lane, and right now he's doing an okay job. But uh, Monkey King's super scary if he's able to get that key farm that you need, particularly to be able to counter out that uh, what we've been talking about. You know, the global silence, the Ember Spirit, your Spirit trying to get in on top. I wonder what the difference is going to be with his item build as well this game to deal with the Phantom Lane. So hold that thought, Mizu. He's in a bit of a pickle down, but it's only Pango bring the assistance. I don't think Mizu stays alive and. They'll commit deep under the tower. Here Cam, <laughs> looking for some revenge. The they will get it on Lun. <laughs> He's got some abilities back up in a couple of seconds. Doesn't sidestep the roll. Meanwhile, we see Zorian falling at the side of the map here. Your Cam can still get some distance. That damage mitigation with two points and the shield crash is enough. So silly that you, as a support, could just run into three heroes, press a single button and be totally fine. Yeah, very cool hero. Lacrity has built up a nice little lead in this mid lane as well. More than a thousand gold ahead at the uh, seven minute mark of the game. A full level ahead as well. 
So did any stacks start to build up for him too? I feel like if he's going to be able to quickly use those to be able to transition into... Dyer's oh, bottom yeah, tower that was just skill A rolling on through. Uh, that I could see there wasn't any stacks at the <laughs> moment on Alacrity. He's gone for not the naked rush in, in the blink. We'll see if he even commits for the wand as well to further slow this down. But he's looking for an early rotation. I like that movement as well. He was anticipating maybe a ward in the river to scout out, which there was on, on Radiant, but he ran actually through by the Radiant outpost. So they're not aware of this. They want how. A nice use of the last word will prevent the combo. Illusion's going to be able to dispel that. And now how? No escape. They want to shove in the lane instantly and find Lun as well. Or maybe some tower damage that can definitely stick around. And yeah, they're looking to do that as Mizu just hitting the level 6. So he has this potential for the swap. But unfortunately, no way to just close the distance. I like with, with Alacrity as well. You know, he was considering, like you mentioned, the uh, the magic wand into an Echo Saber and then the Blink Dagger. But he's just like, you know what? I'm just going to go with that kill. The PL's not going to have quite as good of a game as he might have expected. Speaking of the PL, he comes back down to this bottom side. I think should be fine, though. He's got uh, Lun joining him back again. Gives some valuable experience over to the Pango as well. Just parking himself in the mid lane. Nearly reached his level 6. And he's going to have that... Uh, those arcane boots. Really effective, actually. So I feel like this sort of build for Joe Cam, obviously you're a position 4, not a pos 5. So you could be a little greedier. I reckon the build for him is arcane boots into a blink dagger and then disassemble the boots into a Dyer's lotus See how survivable the Pango is. Doesn't look like that's going to be too much of the case as young PH can chase him down. So, little nice pick me up there almost for the Ember Spirit. They are hunting skill A, making sure they hold the boundless as soon as he utilizes the roll there. And in your dream is having an incredible time. And it does look like he's going to offer into the Maelstrom, but bottom lane, how is actually going to continue to fight? Nice little illusion juke gives him some time. Because they've also got the extra plus one coming through from Young PH for the rotation. Is it enough to help keep Mizu alive? It looks like it's not, unfortunately. Still, Alacrity is a big target if they can bring him down to slow down the blink timing. I think they're going to be able to, but it's going to be another five or so seconds until he gets off that second combo. And yeah, I think they've got plenty of survivability to be able to withstand that. This attempt on the Young PH, I don't think it's going to result in anything. Maybe toss back to Yokem? It's actually going to go Maybe up in the air. Oh, Yorikam still doesn't have any mana. Alacrity playing it a little bit too fine here. Mizzy's showing up. Finally, they should be able to kill off the Ember, but still it's cost Yorikam a lot of his health, so how could just clean up? It's definitely not what you want to be happening if you're uh, the Tiny there, of course. It felt like as soon as the Ember Spirit was there, he would have known how much damage he was being dealt in the laning stage with that uh, Flame Guard, so... Uh, I just don't think you have the secondary combo to be able to burst him down, and that I was run. the case. I mean, it's just... Look at the lead he's now given away on Alacrity. Like, Ember and the Tiny and neck and neck now in the in the net worth. And this would have been an incredible timing on the blink. Unfortunately, just that one kill and, and Young PH getting active early there gives himself a, a game, because it was looking a bit grim at, at some stage. It was. Now you've got the uh, the Tome of Knowledge picked up by Paulson, so his hook shot's going to be ready. I'm sure they're feeling fairly confident that they've uh, successfully been managed to take this bottom tower. So where's the attempted play going Radiant's to happen? You can see here, Young PH, she's diving behind the tier 1 tower, just doing a bit of a scouting mission. Joined together by his supports under the cover of the smoke, and it's actually Alacrity again that they're going for. They missed the roll. Doesn't look like that's going to matter. Even laying down the Global Science just to secure... The kill on Alacrity, but I like the movement from Zor Rain. They've got the catapult. Now the blast can do so much damage, but might be in trouble though. The deer crap not really coming back in his oh, nice favor. Kick. What a kick away, but Polison still able to find an angle just inside the river to bring down the pesky Pogna. Now the fight split in two. Down to the bottom side, Jokam looking to battle it up against Lun. And but does have this mobility to get involved as well. Even in your dream, wanting to try and show up the swap. Helping Yo came out, but he won't be able to keep the light. But nonetheless, they'll also add Young PH to the tally as Galaxy Racer find four in the middle lane. 
real value being able Radiant to pick off a lacquer to start that, but it uh, ends up costing them a fair amount. Radiant I like the timing that uh, you look to make that well, has in trouble rotation pop. there on Indian Dream. They know that Doppel's on cooldown, a lacquer can just blow him up. Nice right. rotation from mid to top they go, bringing down the position one. And that gives him his blink dagger as well, so the rotations are going to look to continue. He could just look to play with Paulson, just the two of them, and uh, try and secure Excellent. plenty of kills. I feel like Yokam, his job is going to be, yes, to farm a little bit himself, but maybe play around Mizu to uh, ensure that he's not going down super early. He's finished up one component of the uh, the Aghanim Scepter. Oh, we'll see the, the blink the coming into play. Young PH just had a little bit of Flame Guard remaining. So the damage mitigation is enough, and now they've trapped themselves on the high ground. Zorain will cut off the retreat, aiming the clockwork first, because then they can target Alacrity second. The urn consistently cancelling out the blink, and Skill Lay has a way to close the distance. As they'll add another one, also stealing the intel. Very important. Simultaneously by the outpost, Mizu attempting a TP. Will he make it? Nice heads up, TP. Nice, uh, nice game sense, though, coming through from Yango Galacticos, though, right? Like, they saw that the Tiny was the one that uh, had picked up the kill onto the peel on the top side. He was no new items for quite a while, probably expecting that that Blink Dagger was come. So they grouped up around each other so that when that rotation, exactly the one I was talking about, right, with the clockwork and the Tiny happened, they had the turnaround potential for it. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Will at least be able to find their first T1 of the tower for Yangon. But still gonna see Galaxy Racer look to get pretty active. This is with Mizu still trying to farm the Aghanims, but Clockwork, this Valens or Rain. They don't have to commit too heavily, although Yokan will drop the ultimate. Meanwhile, they've also found Skill Lay to the northern side. A nice kick into the roll. Can they stop it? Mizu just in range. Every kill that Mizu is able to claim is just a little bit of that extra boost that you need to pick up the Aghanim Scepter. Now he's got the point booster, so a little bit more survivability for himself, Radiant's as well as the mana pool if there are any attack. extended fights that break out. Yeah, I'm sure he's even going to look to try and steal one of these uh, hard camps there. Anything that you can take away from YG at this point is great. Young PH, though. Arcane Rune popped. Lacrity? It's not easy to kill under a tower like that, but... They want to try and force it out. They'll have to do that with the global sound. So they're secure with the kill, but does compromise their positioning as they'll gap close on Lun. I think they're going to look to go again. I mean, you've just uh, used the life drain to heal young PH back up to fairly healthy, and he's still got a fair chunk of that arcade rhythm. Only the one remnant left, though. Mizu, swap back. Nice use of the sound, nice though. Stopping the Wukong's commands or rain still. In a peculiar position on the enemy team's high ground and how he just completed the diffuser blade. So this is going to be a decent showing here. So got to be careful how deep they want to commit. It's Dyer controlling an area inside the river. So it's going to force back Yangon Galacticos. But the magnetizers are consistently ticking them down. The incessant spam of the magical damage is going to force multiple heroes to fall. And now they can target down the Pangolier as well. Are so at fight from Yangon, you just saw how they're able to sidestep the Wukong, play the outskirts, and the damage from the Earth Spirit. The damage from the Earth Spirit and Ember, right? Just laying out with those arcane runes. Alacrity nearly made a really cool play happen there. So he. The fight went on for so long, right? So uh, young PH had to go all the way back to base after laying down a uh, fire remnant just to refill the bottle, get some of that fountain regen. Tiny parked himself right on top of that flame remnant and immediately used the Avatos combo onto him, but it just wasn't enough to be able to take him out with the, uh, the use of the flame guard there. You see, it's. Alacrity's blink. I mean, he's one, four, and five now. As a hero that you really want to snowball, and uh, unfortunately, it's a game when we're not going to see it. I feel like there is still maybe some of the potential when you've got this Echo Saber. You know, that's going to certainly enable you to kill the Pugna, who is still feeling fairly squishy right now. Only has the cloak, which of course is going to go a long way. Such a value item pickup, not looking to build it into, you know, a Glimmer Cape or anything like that super early. But, uh,. With Zorain just having the Aether Lens available for himself means that he is still vulnerable if he gets found out. Radiant. Gonna try and infiltrate the enemy territory. 
Moving forward to the, the outpost and now sweeping behind the tower. So with the Pugna, you want to try and get as many objectives as possible. Nice to by Paulson to reveal the smoke. You see they're committing this deep. They don't have the instant start. Skill lay. Gonna have to be pretty on point here with his role, but as long as they can just almost be a bodyguard for the Pugna on this siege. Wanting to get baited into hooking onto the, uh, the Earth Spirit, of course, you can always get away. Hell, even the uh, the Earth Spirit can just kick you away, right? And then use the Rolling Boulder to be able to get to safety. I think that's a, a huge dodge of a fight as well for Galaxy Racer, because Mizu's very close to the, the Aghanims, and if they took another fight around the river where PL could get involved with the Fusil Hood, I feel like this could have been a, a fight where Yangun could just drag it back into their favor, especially with... I feel like the the item timings they have yeah for sure i mean this also gives galaxy racer the chance to get some of those neutral items mizu he's going to get to level 12 as well as picking up this agonim scepter very shortly they might have to give up the tier one mid for it i, I really don't want to see mizu joining in on this until he's got his full ag scepter well they've smoked up in fact multiple heroes behind skill lay and well, polish sun as soon as he hooked in is gonna look to a trade and yokam Unfortunately, not able to follow up. Mizu actually swaps him back to safety. And on the back line, Alacrity does blow up the Pugna. It's going to look for a TP out. Do they have a cancel on the chains? They do, but in your dream, trying to show up as well with the buyback coming into fray. We saw what skill they could do previously with the Magnetize. He's a little bit shy on the mana at the moment, but they need a way to protect in your dream. Oh, Wukong's getting casted, but the bonus armor will give you no assistance versus the life drain. That's a big kill to be able to pick up as well. Is now how continuing to reign supreme. A perfect timing for the Phantom Lancer to coming. show up underneath the tower. As we'll be able to secure a double kill and Yango that's the fight they were looking for in Galaxy Racer. Surprised they took the timing to go for it. Yeah, he had the courier coming out to him there on the venge, just thinking Zaya's maybe it might have saved him attack. before the uh, the death, so he can at least continue to get some of that experience out there. But uh, no, not quite quick enough on the timings, and honestly, a little bit of a, a weird decision for the vengeful spirit to look to join that fight. It ends up costing him his life. Did see the effect of having a alacrity still able to get onto the pugna though instantly burst him down now with that echo saber yeah, the, the threat continues to be even more real yeah, yeah. it's just gonna be that uh like you see the difference right monkey king as well so close to being able to pick up the uh the bkb the fact that he doesn't have it means that the life drain can go on, even though the uh, the Wukong's command was set up in a pretty good spot to defend the, the back line of the team fight a little bit. It, uh, ends all it just wasn't there for the full effect, considering all the, the magic damage that you're still able to dish out just with the Ember Spirit, the life drain, and Silence's spells laying in on top of you as well. And now even Silence is pretty uh, self-sustainable as well. Like, it's still going to be... Zorain, I feel, that's the main target for both the Clockwork and the Tiny. But you've got a 4 staff now on the Silencer, considering he's been part of 14 out of the 18 kills. I do want to see one point in the Glaives of Wisdom, though. Mm. The fact that it's been this aggressive and he still hasn't put one point into it feels like a big opportunity missed. And even just against... You imagine, like, the Tiny. Uh, he's died yeah. multiple times, minimizing a little bit of the intel for a hero that is very mana-dependent. But uh, they're gonna look for a smoke. Mizu's not the target. So see the clockwork more than likely behind the Venge as well. They're gonna try and go cross map down to In Your Dream at bot. But I think they're gonna be a bit too late. Dyer actually mirroring this move of their own. So they're straight oh. behind. The chase is on. Are they gonna find them on top of the stairs though? He's standing in the trees. Oh, he oh, can't cancel dream. it. Okay, BKB popped. Rest the team is nearby. They might not expect how close they are. Instant jumping in. They'll clean off Zoray now with the Wukong's command to drop. They'll try and target down the silencer. Bit loot too late to prevent at least the global. Maybe this will help multiple other heroes of Yangon get out to safety. But Young PH? He's only got one more remnant now. This has already used his swap. Hookshot still on cooldown too. Skill, I don't know if you want to complete that TP, and he doesn't. But uh, again, just going to show the effect. He of the uh, the monkey king obviously the extra vision he'd already committed with the uh the primal spring there so he knew that he was jumping into potentially his death but you just see the difference in having the bkb enabling him to survive that little bit longer skill eh? <laughs> that is key he's taking a lot of time though 
It's forced to fight to the river where Radiant still have their own tower. They know the Wukong's BKB is on cooldown. Nice TP from In Your Dream. Somehow getting out of dodge and you have to hope the rest of Galaxy Racer can do so as well, but they're hunting Mizu and Alacrity. How and Young PH still in fighting shape at the moment as I'll just look to target down Mizu. The sacrifice with the Aghanims. But, I mean, that'll still kill him. Not getting the value out of that Aghanim Scepter there. I, I like the fact that he, you know, immediately looked to split away from the Tiny, Daya's make sure it's not the, the hero that attack. doesn't have the second life at his disposal to, uh, to go down there. But, well, still things not working out quite so well for Galaxy Racer as they were hoping. I mean, we've seen house performances on this uh, PL. They've been amazing. And he's looking to continue that with a, another impressive performance this time around. He's top of the net worth. Defusal, Sanjin, Yasha, Hood. And now he has the Aghanim Shard as well. So the spam of the Spirit Lance is going to be a huge nuisance. He's got that 15 talent too. For a smoke here with Galaxy Racer around the mid lane. I feel like it's still going to be Zorane. That's the target number one. You know, buyback's still on cooldown if they can find it. Might be happy enough to go just with the Earth Spirit, and it's going to be enough damage to be able to clean need him this up. Tower. Tower is under Should be able to get it. Pushing back. They're actually going to try and Zorane, catch Zorane. The rest of the team should be able to connect fast enough before Yang on shot. They're even going to catch out Lun as well. Right on the outskirts of the T2 tower, so Lacrity will clean up with the double tree smash, and now they can go back and find the tower. Nice little move there from Galaxy Racer, getting more than I was expecting out of it. Mizu even just able to sit there around the mid lane, do some decent racking damage, of course, have your... Uh... Your Vengeance Aura to assist with just the uh, the taking of that tower. And he's even looking to go into a Ghost Scepter, huh? So just, he's a little tired of getting constantly focused down by this PL. Do you feel like how is going to have a performance like we saw last time on the Phantom Lancer? Let's hold that thought. Young PH. Just completed the Aghanim, so we'll look to jump the clockwork, block off a, a Hook Avenue. They're still hunting for more. In your dream. Oh, they're actually going to look to go into Roche. They've got Wukongs. 3,100 gold in the bank for the Monkey King. So he's missing a, a fair component here if they look to contest it. And I don't believe they are. All right, just looking to continue farming. For Galaxy Racer, their big timings are... I mean, honestly, Alacrity, he's close to picking up that BKB. But I feel like you need that plus the Aghanim Charge just to consistently stand in that they're coming. Fight. Yo, Cam will try and charge it up. Is there any extra follow-up? It's got the consistent control for how. There's no vision outside the pit, though. He's doing an incredible job to continue to stay on top. But Yokan gets obliterated afterwards in your dream. Tries to move in, but the Aegis snatched from how. They need to lay down the Wukongs, but they have to wait out the use of the Global Silence here. Now, finally, in your dream, can charge up the ultimate to look to control the area, but they already have the magic damage to burst through him with the BKB on cooldown. Now, Alacrity's the target on the outskirts of the fight as well as Yang on Galacticos find three. Become peace. Another good attack. Uh, team fight, sorry for YG. Being able to clean up that one and get the kill. A again, like, you see the difference there with how the Monkey King is able to use his BKB, right? He jumps in, he knows that he needs that magic immunity, so he needs to try and pop it. Global Silence, really nice timing coming through from Lund to make sure that that Wukong's command doesn't go off and Galaxy Racer don't win that team fight. That's really why I'm looking into Jokem on his Pangolier. I, I don't think you need a Yule Scepter on this Pango. Yes, it's going to be nice to be able to lock someone down, but I feel like having that Lotus Orb just to provide that that extra uh, silence removal for if someone on your team pops the BKB a little bit early is going to be far more effective. I guess it feels like he believes that his own life is a lot more important with the cost-effective heals instead of the Lotus to help out a teammate. He's sure, but he's already got one of the components, right? He's got the Arcane Boots, and you can just look to disassemble that, so... I don't know. I'm I'm a big fan. Like you can even look to go into the uh, the void stone next, right? To keep your options open. It's a component for both items. So, uh, I how are they going to come back into this one? I mean, you've got almost the BKB again for Alacrity. He's not quite level 18 either. So he feels like he's been taking a decent amount of right click damage just from 
the uh, the PL when he's getting it onto him. You know, it's just not just the magic train anymore. Pretty decent farm that Howe's been able to obtain for himself. And do you feel like this is a game where PL is just has a free time and he's not a game up against many counters like we the last performance we saw or do they have ways to deal with him as the game goes on i think it depends on like the the duration of the team fights because it seems to me that galaxy racer are just going all in onto their burst potential right like you've got a tiny who has his avatos combo uh, he's, okay, I was about to say, like, what, he's going into a, uh, Moon Shard next, but he had a Daedalus queued up for the longest time. I really want to see that Aghanim Shard come out for the Tiny, just so that you can, you know, stay in the middle of a team fight, not have to worry about how am I using my right clicks? Am I going to be without a tree to deal with this PL? Because I feel like that's one of the other things that Howe's been doing really well, is that he notices when the Tiny's a threat, and when he's not holding onto that gigantic sword, you're like, well, I don't really care about the Tiny right now. I can just go in on top of it. But otherwise, he's been keeping his distance fairly well unless there's some kind of chain lockdown onto Alacrity. It's going to be interesting to see how Alacrity can find that farm as the game goes on. Because you know, he's definitely going to be a way that can help out mitigate some of the PL issues with his AoE damage. But the question is on if he can keep up in the farm and keep finding those items. Because it could just very well get to a stage where if you lose another fight, all of a sudden you're funneling all your farm into the Monkey King. So it's going to be the question on Gaelic Racer with how much they can still get out the map. I guess it's nice because like a Vengeful Spirit is someone who as soon as you get Ags, you seem to not have as much farm priority as the rest of the cores and even sometimes the supports will pick up the slack. I mean, I was thinking, like, with this Ghost Scepter on the Vengeful Spirit, like, what, what exactly is it for? Obviously, you don't want to just be burst down and have your mana drained by the PL, right? But Well, he, he feels like he's going to be targeted by PL. That, that's, sure. that's his main issue. Like, and I would also say, like, PL has to aim the Venge. Because Venge is very single target. So even after you die the first time, you cannot save yourself the second time unless you have to swap your own illusion to get away so i'm just thinking like what how would things be different if this was a yasha instead of the uh the ghost scepter and you're already a little bit further towards that um but do you think he's actually going to be star? right clicking in fights i i don't think he'll get any opportunity i think if he's right clicking they've lost the fight there's big issues if venge like he, he venge is not a hero to deal with peel so i think you have to build huge utility well that's what kind of what the manta is right sure. you, you at least give yourself the the dispel for the global silence and then you can maybe get a swap onto one of your key targets whether it be the uh the tiny or the monkey king so that uh you know they don't die during the duration of that silence okay so you're looking at the route of just a a more expensive way to get rid of global okay yeah and then there is still like you know there's a little bit of right click potential you know if you're able to find mm -hmm. the uh the silencer for example you can look to deal with him because you still got a lot of uh decent right click damage if you get that off that wave of terror and I guess it's maybe going to help as well with shoving up lanes. It's a minor thing, but you know, Venge is someone that does have to put your body pretty aggressively with the low attack range. You don't have like the ghost push with any of your abilities. So maybe if it gets to a stage where you need a lot of the lane shoved out, Monkey can fulfill one of them. Then maybe just a Manta can you know, give you some extra farm that you wouldn't have got previously. So, okay, yeah, well... But like you were saying, though, like it's the it's the choice of if you you go that before the ghost scepter, because I mean you would have had Yasha completed by now, and you know, maybe by the stage of next team fight. But are there any other items for Yangon that are about to be picked up that you feel like is going to continue their momentum? We got anything flying out to them at the moment? I mean, PL's got his heart almost. Uh, only the vitality booster away so i mean you already had trouble taking him out and uh, i feel like the only way that you're going to be able to try and burst him down is when you pick up the the uh, the aghanim shard on the tiny and it just feels like the the pl his net worth is going up at a much faster rate so when you do the mass you know a thousand gold away on the pl at least 1400 on the tiny pl is going to have it first and you're probably going to lose a few towers in the meantime as well not only that, but they... Hang on. Uh-oh. Oh. 
Oh no. Oh so no. So I think this was this is an issue that a lot of play, uh, players use the console command to be able to get out of a game. So if you go to console and type in disconnect, I'm pretty sure you don't have the issue with being able to rejoin the game. But if you type quit instead to just immediately quit the game and try and relaunch Dota, then it'll give you this issue. Wait, say I that just again? don't touch the con. So in console command, if you press disconnect, yeah. it uh, if you type disconnect, excuse yeah. me, then it just brings you back to the main menu. Yeah. And then you can leave the game and uh, the sorry, you can quit to exit instant, the game. Get out of Dota. Yes. Okay. And I'm pretty sure if you do quit you can't get back into the game. Like, it's a bug that's happening pretty Very recently. cool. Yeah, I, I heard about it a little bit. Um, dude. That's a bit of a yikes. Well, uh, Silencer, how good is your micro? <laughs> that's unfortunate they were in a pretty Yikes. good spot i don't know what to say to that man that's right, um, they're, they're gonna try for it i mean they've i there's not much you can say in response but that seems like it's a, a much better response than i would have had i'd be uh all right well i mean i guess lun just pops global and four staff away and you play zorain yeah Pop the pop the global, maybe get the arcane curse off, and yeah, just try and stay near the team fight so you get some sort of uh, some sort of uh, int steal, perhaps if you're in the general range. But they're they're looking at maybe strategize about okay, who's going to take control over him at the moment? There has to be this answer. I feel like, I, of course, anyone who dies then probably preferable, but sure. um, damn. Well, if Raiden can do this. Okay, well, this comes back to the argument. Can Peel... Can... <laughs> can Peel take over this game? Uh, I feel like he kind of already has, you know? He's still got the Aegis. And maybe... <laughs> maybe they're looking to at least just wait for that, uh, that heart to come up to... I don't want to say secure the game for themselves, but give them a little bit more safety with how they're going to be able to take the objectives moving forward. What do you feel like tough the, though? What do you feel like the Pugna was providing a lot for the team? I, I know more than likely they're going to at least have someone microing, but like I'm intrigued on your thought on, on what this hero was providing in a lot of the team fights. Uh, I think a lot of it is just the, the decrep potential. Uh, being able to, you know, break up the team fights, force an earlier BKB perhaps than Galaxy Racer might be liking. You know, if they're using it uh, on the one of the Galaxy Racer heroes, then, you know, if In Your Dream's committed heavy, he's forced to pop that BKB and then you can maybe get the global silence there in response. So I think that's the, the key component that they're looking for there, as well as a couple of times, you know, we've seen on to uh, Young PH, the life drain used just to make sure that he's safe to try and re-engage. we See, it's a, a hero that has still been touched up and you know, needs a little bit of time till it feels like it's going to come back in the meta with the, the good old Pugna, but he, um, he's had a strong shot. The Nether Ward doesn't have great value yeah. in this game. You know, maybe if it still had that mana reducing aura, then yes, because, you know, you don't have the heroes with the highest mana pools right now on uh, Galaxy Racer's side, so would have been a little bit more difficult for them, but still... I feel like Decrep is just an insane amount of value. And then as well, if they do take a uh, a team fight victory, the Nether Blast, of course, just enables them to be able to push that a little bit faster. So you know the uh, the tweet that was out recently? I think it was Gilga. I don't. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I'm pretty sure. What team was he on? Halber for a while. Halber Smashes. I think that was the team he was on. Not but sure. the the tweet about the. Uh, little nuances of individual heroes and like the you know, little things that people never knew. Did did you uh, get a response? I, I saw you were, you were looking for a li lich one. Oh, we're back. I didn't. I was God damn. severely ignored. Uh, was, uh, well, that was <laughs> that was a long thread to read. I saw one of them in particular. I remember you brought it up a couple of days ago. I cannot remember which one it was, but I. TB. Yep, the Terror Blade. The oh yeah, that was the disassemble, the Echo and Dragon, something like that. I think. 
And yeah, so get a, get an Exodus, Echo Saber, and a uh, uh, sorry, a Dragon Lance and an hmm. Oblivion Staff. Yeah, well, and just look to disassemble, reassemble. Another one that I saw for the Silencer and that I didn't know is if you deny your teammate, they actually lose intelligence, which I thought was fascinating. I did not know that at all. Which, you know, in a game, instead of stealing the intel, your, your poor team, you're actually removing their own if you have to deny them? They, they're actually just kind of... How long have they got I ages? I think they're going to try and end as quickly as possible. <laughs> Okay. Like, look, we, we can't have five people farming against our four. We've got the Aegis. Let's try and make the game in right now. Well, they have Aegis for another minute 40 here. They just completed the Skadi, swap back into the Rolling Thunder. They're a little bit split to protect him. They're going to jump the back line as well to prevent some assistance for Hal. But the Global Science laid down to try and assist on the first life. And Hal's out to safety. Simultaneously, they'll lose the clockwork. Actually, no clocks. Okay. Swap back into the Wukong. So in your dream. So we're going to try and man fight through the duration of the Wukongs, but they've lost three already. Galaxy Racer looks like there was big issues with how they weren't able to deal with the Ember. Yeah, Lund, he was the one that wasn't being controlled at that point in time. It was the Silencer just sitting off into the trees. It was a good hook shot by Paulson, but with Skillay off onto the sidelines, you could still use these four heroes. So it's not the end of the world right now for... Uh... Yeah, and how? Be careful, the ones are right. Doesn't look like it can deal with the Phantom Lancer, so they have to avoid him and go for some of the backline as Alacrity, making the attempt, but he can't even kill off Young PH. Now, Mizu, the target, once again. <laughs> He's got the illusion to work around with. Can he find a swap target? Back to Young PH. The remnants are on cooldown. Alacrity's going to look for the burst, but the protection. Young PH still alive. They'll turn on Alacrity and Yangon. Somehow still haven't lost anyone until now. Polison sniped the Ember with the hook shot. Still though, that's Elena Rax. You've still got How alive with the very healthy HP pool. Only 20 seconds left on uh, the Aegis, but he's not going to care. You've already been able to push that one in. No blip as well, so you have to wonder, are they just going to look to try and push in this mid lane as quickly as possible? By the time they get there, though, they should have the respawns coming up for uh, Galaxy Racer. Aegis is soon to be out, Radiant. They need to try and refill their resources as they're very low in your dream. In the river, they have run into skill lay. Oh, just getting oh, the swap. Oh, the roll. And the magic missile. Yeah, that's plenty of damage. They're they pushed though. In. I mean, they, yeah, they had the, uh, the bottom lane creep still pushed in at the time. So I wanted to take advantage of the backdoor protection. That's another hero going down, though. And there's no Aegis anymore. So how's got to be careful. Can they kill the PL, man? This is a true test. Can the Phantom Lancer 5v1? He'll get some assistance from afar with the Global Science. How? So looking at reset. I mean, Ember's up very shortly. Maybe Earthstrike can buy back as well when joined by the Outpost, but they can't control through the Wukongs. He'll just make it on the outskirts with the bounce back. Yo, Cam, what a play with the Rolling Thunder. A perfect use of the ultimate to combine up with the Wukongs. That's a big kill for the side of Dyer. He doesn't need no Yule Scepter. He's able to just make the flex doing it without it. And uh, coming in clutch at the perfect time. Man, PL very close to being able to... Like, he was chain lockdown. Otherwise, he would have popped that Hood of Defiance. Had the 325 magical yes. damage reduction. <laughs> and then, you know, maybe that might have been enough for the doppelganger away and allow the heart regen to start to kick in and survive. Probably a sigh of relief here for Galaxy Racer, considering they didn't lose more. Felt like Yangon were... Going to look to pillage more and more of Galaxy's real estate, but give them some opportunity to get their next set of items. Well, we've got uh, How just saying, like, what is this little magic man that I'm controlling now? <laughs> I, I would have to say, like, that. would you say that's one of the cutest sets in the game, the Pugna one right now, with his gigantic hat? Is it? You call that cute? I don't know if I call that I cute. Would. What makes it, it cute? It just seems so impractical, you know? Like, it's, it's like a, a kid wearing his dad's clothes, you know? <laughs> Looks like he's a... A rich... Saudi that has... A cool little... He's the whale that keeps Dota going, you know, every battle pastime. <laughs> the whale. <laughs> yeah.
You always see like the the Saudi crown prince with a level of about a hundred thousand on their battle pass. Ooh. All right, Galaxy Racer. Ooh. London's a pretty valuable target. They're gonna run into Young PH as well. Instead, looks to rend them to protect their sides up, but he's gonna fall for fifty. Chain lockdown swap. Actually, back into the cogs. But How's looking to get involved. If they can bounce it back for the chain lockdown to keep him inside the Wukongs, they won't be successful. So Galaxy Race, they have to split away. They'll swap back Zor Reign to the Pogna. Don't be brought down here, but still the target again. on top of the backline. They're on top of Hal. They need the extra damage coming through for the Monkey King. It looks like he's trying to deal with the utility and In Your Dreams in trouble. The Spirit Vessel to minimize any of the life still in In Your Dreams down. Never refuse he's going for more. Credit. Trying to hunt down Mizu's illusion. Oh. Slide. Slide, he's gonna yeah, juke to the left. Not gonna be enough. Wow, these fights are looking... And just the line being drawn down mid as well. Okay. Now, he's parking himself on the front line. Silence had just respawned as well, so he's got the global silence if they try any sort of buyback plays. He's actually getting a lot of this, uh, this lane creep farm solo as well. I think if I was Skillet, I'd look to try and back off. You know, PL having that level 25 is so Dyer's important for being able to survive, especially in a 4v5 situation. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Really don't want the Monkey King buyback. They'll probably just have to give up the full set. There's still T2 Tower up top. They need that extra life potentially for a Roche fight. Someone might have to go get the DD though by the pit. Someone's going to need to move Zorane as well. He's still sitting right in pace. Clockwork. Mid on forward. They don't want to buy back on the monkey, so this is a bit of a window where Yangon can find more than enough kills to enable the siege. Just swap back, Mizu. A nice target to find, Yokem. Looking to try and transition this into more as well. The Ember's the target. Do they have the damage to go through? They've dealt with the flame guard. Bounce back once again. Yokem with the U turn. They need an anchor for the hookshot. Can they find it? It's not even required. As Ember's going to go down. Now the target is how Monkey King's back alive and they'll kill him off. Somehow they hold the base, a beautiful defense, as they can look to turn for the silencer as well and make it four down as Galaxy Racer somehow mount an incredible hold. Just looking to check if Roche is up as well with Zorain again. Uh, I mean, they're, they're going to scout it out as well, so that's going to be the double life coming through for Yango and Galac uh, sorry, for Galaxy Racer. You have to consider, like, how could that have potentially been different if the Pogna was there? You know, even just dropping down the Nether Ward, perhaps burning out... Uh, a little bit more damage onto the enemy team, having the potential for the life drain, or when skill A end up dying pretty soon into the team fight, you could still have that that uh, extra person to be able to micro. Instead, you have to walk all the way up from base. Second Roche. So ages and Aghanim shard. In your dreams actually gonna get the shard at the moment and they give the ages to alacrity. He's got the Satanic now on In Your Dream. Did... Wait. Okay, no, he did use it. I thought he sold the shard. Can you even sell the Ag shard from Roche? I don't know. I haven't tested it. Every time I have the privilege of being able to pick it up, I'm just like, give me, Instant give me. use. Yeah, understandable. Just a poor support whenever you can get anything. I feel like it's a dream. I understand. So it's a rough life Absolutely. out there. Have to be a little bit careful about committing anyone here to the defense. The only one with buyback at the time is Silencer. So I think uh, he's going to be one that's going to delay any kind of push. Although they're TPing in here with Hal. I feel like they can contest outside the base. They're going to make sure Yokam doesn't get an incredible rolling thunder. The Magnetize is doing the work at the moment, forcing an early use of the BKB and Mizu. Might even end up falling. Well, Somehow. Okay. Is it... Would you even rather him to die? How do you heal him back up? Oh, he's dead now. Let him die now. Force an extra <laughs> oh, commitment. Swap back. How's in trouble? Toss up in the air, but the global science might be able to protect him. They got the rolling thunder fast enough. He's got to buy back if they want to rejoin the fight. He's going to do an instant, but they have to be careful. A choke point fight with the Wukongs might just tear Yang going in half, as it looks like it will. Four down, no buybacks on multiple heroes. As now they can lead to tail out the end of this game. How it's all up to him. Can he bring them back in such a deficit? Got a 
Lafferty there. He's looking to get in position. He ended up picking up that Moon Shard, just wanting to stand in the middle of every single team fight and just be beating down onto Hal, instantly revealing which illusion is the real one. Swap again. We found Lun. Oh, he's got a buyback. Go Spirit as well. Look, he just instantly deals with all these illusions. That's Alacrity's job right now. Just hit illusions whenever they start to build up. There is a T2 down bot, so they won't get at least the bottom set. They're going to look for mid as well. Going to offset some of the disadvantage they were at previously with the map control. Lacrity still has ages for another 2 minutes 30 as well. They're doing their best to poke down the first life. Gonna force them back to base though. These creeps are starting to hit onto the tier 4. So it gives Yangon at least a little bit of a reprieve. Man, you hate to see it when you're in a really commanding position. And uh, you know something that's... I don't want to say it was out of their control. But something that... It's an unknown bug, you know? Nice one that might not give them any assistance, though, in this game one. The end gun still... We see now they're able to perform at least earlier in the game. Down Zorain. We'll see if somehow that Hal can find a clutch fight here with the Phantom Lancer, but it feels like the... mass accumulation of items for Galaxy Racer just might be too much... For Radiant to, to hold off. And not even just items that they're buying as well. You can see the difference. Like, that happened, I think, at the 27-minute mark when uh, the DC happened. And since then, they have only picked up 3 out of 10 neutral items, potentially. Just because they've been so desperate on trying to end the game, not wanting to turn this into a farming war. But, you know, not having a, a bunch of Tier 3 items and now Tier 4 items, it's just going to become even more difficult. And they've got no vision on the map as well to get out, which is big issues. I mean, Earth Spirit has the stone, so Radiance bottom there's little sense of vision across the map, but Radiance you're, you're right. Lacrity is just chunking down these towers as well. With the Solar Crest, with the Moon Shard, he's got the Penta Edge Sword as well. And almost level 25. Look at this. How many, how many hits do you reckon? Two couple misses you hate to see it but well, age is gonna tick out in 25 if yangon can time this can be an angle back in but in your dream Seven has hit. the extra ring on the wukong so they might just drop this down it feels like they just give up the life of the pug now really looking to worry about too much hook shot to start but instantly laying down the global science they're able to jump the monkey king it's a lot of damage at the moment targeting in your dream but there's no extra fall but they're trying to deal with the backline support but now they have the initial stun to do the u-turn to lock down the ember spirit now they've even caught out another as misery just putting his body on the line with the illusion just to swap back with ease to find multiple kills and now from the bottom set they can transition into the middle set look to make it mega creeps and i feel like yang gong now not an opportunity to come back it's all on how but i don't think he can 5v1 and he cannot indeed a bit of an unfortunate circumstances for yang gong but Nonetheless, Galaxy Bracer still execute a way back into this to take it. You hate to see it. Uh, I, I want to have a quick look at the win probability after all of that, because it felt like if I had to be a, a betting man, I would have put Yang on probably about 70%. Let's have a quick look. Uh, da, 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 da. It was higher than that. God damn. <laughs> it was sitting at at least like, what is that? 85%? Damn. That is, uh... Sights you don't want to see. That is sights you, you don't want to see at all. I mean, it's still got to be at least some silver linings for Radiant with how well they were able to play that game for a long portion of that as well with you know, Zorain still sticking around. Like, this is a young teen up against Galaxy Racer and, and the fact that how strong they were looking in a, in a position where they probably could have taken it. I like the, the choice of background. But I just it's 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 just how I'm feeling right now, you know, because this is a team again, they've come through the open qualifiers, they they're playing from Myanmar, so there's all sorts of internet issues already. And now, you know, in a game against a very highly touted opponent where they're in a really good position to try and win, 
they uh, they have to lose in a situation like that. And, you know, when you think about it, it's so even across the board right now with all of the scores that, you know, it, you would hate to have this be the difference between them qualifying for that lower bracket run and just not making it all together. Yeah, but there's at least still a long run left for, for Yangon Galacticos. I mean, they've only played five series so far and, you know, they still have plenty more to go. So it's game one. Anything can happen in second game. I'm sure they're looking for almost a little bit of revenge, like a, a chip on their shoulder, you know, feeling with how unlucky they got. So we'll see the momentum and the fight they can bring back into the second game after a short break. 